by God's grace, I'm the one going to facilitate this lesson. And then subsequently, we are going to have uh, many other facilitators do this. And as we've mentioned, we want to encourage us to be able to be participators, even in the safari groups, to reflect. For four Sundays, we'll be done. Patriotism and national building, practicing dual citizenship. That is what we want to learn about this morning. And I want you to turn to your neighbor, and I will be asking the uh, media team to facilitate me with uh, two microphones. I want to get some responses. That to promote a nation is to promote the kingdoms of the world. I want you to turn to a neighbor and dis uh, 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 discuss that question. Uh, that to promote the nation is to promote the kingdoms of this world. Whether you agree or disagree, what do you think? Um, just turn to your neighbor, yeah, to promote this nation, yeah, or to promote your nation is to promote the kingdoms of this world. Turn to your neighbor. If you don't have a neighbor, find one. Um, find one. The Maleche, what is putting your standard next to find a neighbor? Uh, to promote a nation is to promote the kingdoms of this world. In two minutes, I want you to see whether you agree or disagree. I need some two mics, I will be picking some responses, one this side, and then uh, we will be able to proceed. To promote the nation is to promote the kingdoms of this world. Do you agree or do you disagree? And what are your reasons for your disagreeing in that? Yeah, to promote a nation, to promote the kingdoms of this world. What are the responses? There are people who are very quick. The genius have already done the, the question. Um, let me see who is ready to respond. You just tell me what your neighbor has said. The, that is the good thing of discussing now. If you feared to say anything, now just tell me what your neighbor has said, and then that will be good. Uh, who is ready? Uh, to tell me what the neighbor has said. Uh, who's ready? If we volunteer, it will be good. If we don't, I will volunteer you. <laughs> I can volunteer. Anyone from? Ah, there's a hand here. Ah, there's a hand here. Any other person? Any other group? Yeah. Let's listen to him. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is what the, my neighbor and I have discussed, that promoting a nation is like promoting the kingdoms of this world, and uh, he agrees with me that it is true, because from the look of things, this uh, Kenya as a nation, for example, is a kingdom in its own. So when you promote Kenya, you are promoting a kingdom, and when the neighbor does the same, they all grow in the same manner. So, and also Kenya in the current affairs is like the capital of uh, East Africa. So when you promote this nation, you are promoting like the whole of East Africa as uh, the other kingdoms also benefit from the same. Thank you. So other kingdoms, what do you mean? Allow me to ask you a further question. Uh, like the, the way we have just discussed, the kingdoms of this world, uh, Kenya as a nation is a kingdom on its own. Okay. Yes, so when you're promoting it, you're promoting other kingdoms like Uganda and uh, the rest of the other nations. So you, you're promoting other countries? Yes. But the in the context, maybe the kingdom of this world to mean like maybe Saturn or the things are worldly. What do you think? Uh, I, I don't think we, we thought in that, in that okay. dimension. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Any other response? Uh, yes. Any other response? One more? One more and then we proceed? One more, yeah, there's there. the boy child is doing well here today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Let's have the final one there, and then we proceed. <clears throat> Hello, uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Senior, for this opportunity. So we discussed with my neighbor, and uh, our thoughts were, at first we thought it was a trick question, uh, because... Uh, we thought that um, promoting the nation, let's say promoting Kenya as a believer, should uh, in a way be able to promote 
uh, the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. uh, because as Christians, let's say if you promote peace, you promote uh, economic prosperity, get people out of poverty, then that should be able to reflect on the on the on the on the work of of, of God as well, and also encourage non-believers. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. We want just to explore and appreciate the importance of patriotism as an avenue for bringing influence of the kingdom of God on the nation. And there will be three objectives. One is to gain a clear understanding of importance of patriotism as an avenue for bringing kingdom influence on a nation. And secondly, we need to appreciate uh, the role of a believer. You as a believer in patriotism and national building as an avenue of kingdom influence. Yeah, There are people who control uh, our nation. You call them the deep set. Uh, but now, you see, if you don't know how to control that deep state as a believer, we'll have other deep state. We want the deep states who are in the nation, who are in the church. Amen? And then we want to commit. One of the things that we are talking about in Engage is that we commit to be patriotic to our nations. And this implies, I know some of us are Ugandans, some of us are not Kenyans. We mean the nation which you are born to our nations from the kingdom perspective. And that, if you look at that kingdom, you mean the kingdom of God and not the kingdom of the devil. One of the realities of our lives is that God has put us within uh, each and every one of us um, a sense of belonging. We have a sense of belonging. Uh, the, this instinct is inbuilt. And no matter how much we hate our countries of origin, I don't know whether some of us do hate our countries, we still feel greatly offended if anyone says anything negative about it. Some of us feel bad when people talk about our nation. It's therefore clear that every believer automatically has a dual citizenship. Citizens of our earthly nations, this as a country, Kenyan citizen, a Ugandan citizen, a UK citizen, a US, and a citizen of heaven. So when you talk about dual citizenship, we are of this world, we are of heaven in this world. That is the thing that we are discussing in this place. As such, we are dual ambassadors, ambassadors of heaven to our earthly nation, and ambassadors of our nation to our heavenly kingdom. But how can we effectively, the word there, effectively, you could underline that, play this dual role as ambassadors of two kingdoms? In this lesson, we explore the place and importance of patriotism and nation building as an avenue of bringing uh, kingdom influence on our nation. And we mean every nation. So we want to understand what is patriotism, because I hear, I love some of our good patriots in this country. I had one say, dear compatriots, he believes that you are a compatriot. So a, a patriotism is about our relationship with our nations. Your conduct as citizens reveals a lot about your appreciation and commitment to your nation. Thus, it's important to understand the significance of patriotism in relation to the nation. And that's what you want to look at. So what is patriotism? The word patriotism reflects positive disp disposition towards one's country. It speaks of national loyalty and may be shown in several ways. Now, we want to understand, if you are patriotic, what do you do? Um, many of us who are growing, and I think the worship team should have helped me that, I forgot. We were told that when you see a, a national anthem being sung, we would just literally stand. And nowadays I see people just walking. Uh, more you should come back. <laughs> I, there was some, anyway, what I'm saying is, <laughs> but let's look at some few things here. Number one, patriotism denotes devoted, devoted love for your country. That devoted love. For some of us who have those booklets, um, the word there is devoted, devoted love. And the psalmist expressed a deep patriotic commitment 
um, to his country Israel when he declared in Psalms 137 from verse 5 to 6. You can turn there, we read that Psalm, um, Psalms chapter 137, a devotion, devotion or devoted love to his country. And the Bible says in NIV, uh, from verse 5, that your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains, your justice like the great deep, the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. So as citizens, we demonstrate the same to our country. We need to show that deep love. Number two, a person who is patriotic, they speak of national pride. National pride. Sometimes, and Kenyans, I think, we need to arise and go to a place where the national pride is not like um, so official because sometimes we only wear that because we've been asked to. But we must be proud to be of this nation. So Jewish considered Mount Zion as the loftiest of all mountains, a symbol of the greatest the greatness of their nations. And then you read in that Psalms, chapter 48, verse 1 to 2, they say, great is the Lord, greatly to be praised in the city of our Lord, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city, the city of the great king. That is King James Version. Isaiah chapter 62 verse 1 to 3 also depicts the same when you look at the, uh, this description. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for me, for this country, I will not keep silent. This is being proud. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blessing torch. The nation will see your righteousness and all kings your glory. Uh, and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. How many of us would speak of that, of this nation? You know, I walk sometimes, I thank God for what's in issue. Nowadays I pay my, my parking in the pay bill. And I faithful, I park and pay. But some of you, if you don't see our uniformed person, you don't love the nation. We'll talk about that. You would keep that scent and go away. This is national pride. There are things we would speak and fight for because we love our nation. What is a nation? In this perspective, the diction defines a nation as a large body of people united by a common descent, a history, culture, language, inhabiting a particular country or territory. So that is a nation. And many of us talk of a nation of a nation of God, uh, a believers, okay? We'll be talking about a nation in this context, referring to the countries of origin. And I want us that to get because we can become too theological and then also think that um, if this was Sitam and we were to do business, then the money should rotate just around here. You know, <laughs> you will miss it. We are talking about the nation as a country in the terms of the boundaries. I want you to get that context, and that will be also important. So nations are established by God. We need to underscore that, that some of you are writing, the word there that nations are established by God. Um, for you to be in Kenya, I read the history, I'm told that the western part of Kenya was in Uganda. I don't know, but for many of you who lived long, but we want to believe that where the boundary is, the Lord put it there. <laughs> now it's no longer about the, the people who lived in that particular. So God establishes nations. So the word is established by God. And in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, The Lord had said to Abraham, leave your country. For some of us who were here, like me, we are supposed to be in another nation. The Lord knew why we were born here. Okay? 
Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Now, that tells you that where you live as a set boundary, whether it was by disruption, because here we see Abraham being disrupted, and there are many of you, I'm saying like me, my father was doing business here, so I was born here, and uh, I got a citizenship by birth. Some of you went to the U.S. and got a baby there. It's God who disrupted you, and he set it and established you as a nation of that people. And so even this country, we are here by establishment of God. And number two, we learn that God has set boundaries for nations. There are boundaries for nations. Whereas national boundaries may have been drawn by humans, I had alluded to this, they were divinely established by God. Amen? I know some people have that behavior of moving boundaries, and you know them. Even of your land, when they put there, the Lord has done it. Amen? Now, you need to know that our boundaries where they are. I know some of you live around the boundaries, and you, you move them. Whereas they were done by humans, I want you to know that they were divinely established by God. And we need to honor those boundaries. So Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8 says, When the Most High gave the nation the inheritance, when David, when he divided all humankind, he set boundaries for the people. That is very important for you to know about the boundaries that we have so that we don't think that one day we will shift them. Number three, God determined where every person should live. Now, the word there is every person. We are underlining that because some of you think, uh, somebody asked me, it was last Sunday, where I should have been born. I, I attempted to answer. God knew that you will be born in this country. God knew that you will be in this place. You are here by divine things. So, you are established that you will be able to live in that nation. Acts chapter 17, 26. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth and he determined the time set for them and the exact place where they should live. One of the things that has been disturbing me and I think I've been finding also peace is that when you go where God has sent you, you will settle in peace. Yeah. Elder Philip settles in this town for many years and he has no hope of shifting because God has set him to this place. Praise the Lord. That is what we are talking about. Some of us are admired to shift and go to exile. This is our country. Amen? Even after elections or before elections, this is our country. Amen? Now, the implication there is a sin nation established by God. Patriotism is part of our stewardship responsibility. Now, just like you take care of money, we take care of the country because God has established us in this place. So how can we appreciate this now that you have understood why we are born here and why the boundaries were set by God? One is that if patriotism is a stewardship responsibility, then there are expectations God has. Um, uh, if patriotism is a stewardship response, then there are expectations God has has from believers. Micah chapter 6 verse 8 says, He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what uh, does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy, to walk humbly with God. God has expectation to us. Number one is that he expects citizens and me and you to uphold justice. All citizens, especially believers, should ensure justice for everybody. Believers must distinguish between legal justice and kingdom justice. Kingdom justice is not just about merely dispensing legal justice, but rather acting justly. The law must be used to defeat justice. Acts 22 verse 24 to 25 the commander ordered Paul to be taken into the barracks. He directed he to be flogged and be questioned in order to find out why the people were shouting at him. 
like this. As they stretched him out to flog him, Paul said to the centurion standing there, Is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? Now, you see acting justly because some of us misuse law. Thank you for our learned friends who are in the house. God wants us to uphold justice for us as citizens. Patriotism requires that we uphold the rule of law and defend the rights of the innocent. So we don't get the innocent and we want to, them to be convicted. Number two, God expects every citizen to extend mercy to others. Now, as a patriotic nation, a patriotic person, you need to extend mercy to other people. Uh, people are merciless. But we pray that God will help us after this lesson. We can extend mercy. The word there is extend mercy. When we treat each other with love and compassion, we not only reflect God's nature, but we also build more equitable and peaceful society. We want people to extend mercy. In one of the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5 verse 7, the Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Uh, Proverbs 14, 31, He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. God expects us to extend mercy. We are currently having our golden age going for a mission in Kampisamaki. That is quite something because they are buying foodstuffs to do that. Once in a while, even us, and we should be doing this during this harvest season, we have a mercy basket. God expects that we extend mercy to one another. That is why the church exists. And I pray that Sita Meldoret will be able to get and extend that. Extend mercy to one another. Patriotism requires to ensure that we build more equitable society where the rich are not just too rich while the poor are too poor. Because in this nation, as life goes, the gap widens. There are few that continue to eat and eat, and then those who are poor remain poorer. God hates that. He wants us to love one another. We bridge that gap. Many of you come to our church, and they think that everyone here is equal. And uh, sometimes we think there are people that are not. But after the service, there are people here who have not eaten. They come to our offices seeking for something to eat. We pray to extend mercy. Amen. Our visitation elder is saying like this, God must hear us. And we extend that so that we don't live in a fallacy of just living in our own way. We must do that to one another. And that is not in any way discrimination. It is just taking care of one another. We love one another as a people of God. Now, in that context, we love one another, people of all nations. As Sitam, by the way, we don't discriminate. Sometimes even people who come to our office are not born again. That's why you should go to the secretary and go to the pastor. I pray for you, first of all, you receive the word of God, then I give you food. Okay? We don't discriminate. We, um, we, we do that. The soldiers were asking me the other day, we have seen people who are not sit and being given food. And I said, no, this is the house for everyone. And people must benefit. That is why we are in the offices. And we want to do that to every person that is in our nation. Number three is that citizens should ensure that the nation is run in the fear, in the fear of God. Fear of God. We must uphold God in all our dealings. Because God is the one who has established this country. Micah said one of the God's expectations is to walk humbly with God. Believers should be kingdom watchmen. Now, God has employed to be watchmen. For some of us who have never done this work, you should know that. And champions to ensure every godly values and practices are central in national affairs. This will bring God's favor in the land. The word engage is that we need to engage our marketplace. We need to engage where we live. And so, if you are living wherever you work, why we are teaching you this lesson is that people would see some godly attributes in you. For some of you are managers, you realize um, you're just working. One of your colleagues 
maybe you are support staff, it's need, you must demonstrate to them you are a believer that can listen to them, pray with them, pray for them, and even extend mercy. That is why this lesson is here. You show them the fear of God by listening to them and doing what God expects you to do so that you don't remain to be transactional. Number four is that citizens should promote economic prosperity of the nation. While Israel was in captivity in Babylon, God told them to work for prosperity of the nation they lived in. Now, for many of you who are slaves, for many of you who came to this country and you own nothing, or you didn't, God asked them that you go and work and ensure that that nation you have gone it will prosper. Praise the Lord. Now, some of you who are in this nation, some of you who are in this county, you are not born here. You must pray for the prosperity of that nation. That was the kingdom's message. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7 says, Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you do what? You prosper. Praise the Lord. If Kenya prospers, where you are born, if take for example that this is a nation or a negation, then we prosper. We pray for prosperity of the nation or the place where we live. It is a kingdom mandate. There are many of us who say, I will go back to my country. Okay? Um, you just do many things. You don't want anything to prosper. Then that you are not doing up for the king thinks the kingdom of expects you. Look at Genesis chapter 41 verse 49. Joseph stored up large quantities of grain like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. This is somebody who was in prison. You know the story about Joseph. He had been sold by his brothers. If people sell you to this country, do good. This is what we are saying. If some of you by any chance you live in this country, do good. This is the gauge of our nation. It's all about. You are in exile in any place. Do good. Do good. And that will be uh, for the kingdom of God. So how can we believers practice biblical patriotism? How do we practice? Uh, number one, the Bible provides several admonitions uh, and examples of the role of citizens can play for the welfare of the nation. Citizens should show concern for the state of the nation. You should show concern of the state of the nation. Don't be just carefree that, oh, maybe I'm not um, in, uh, of that nation. I'm not part of the party that won. God wants us to show concern for the state of the nation. Nehemiah, a great man that prayed for the nation, if you read in Nehemiah chapter 1, the whole passage, uh, you realize that he found Jerusalem in a very deplorable state. You read that prayer of Nehemiah, you would see a person that was passionate about God moving for Jerusalem. So when God saw the wicked direction Israel had taken, he mourned over it. In Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, which is in your manuals, the Bible says, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken. And his gates have been burned down with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For those days, for some days, I mourned and fasted and prayed before the Lord of heaven. Show concern until you pray. I was telling the people in the prayer meeting that before we tell people about our issues, do we pray about them? Do we pray for our leaders? Do we pray for the nation that God will prosper? That is end. This is somebody who mourned. I don't know how many of you have ever mourned in prayer. I have done one day. You, sometimes you live there and you laugh at yourself whether you are mad. Truth be said, God wants to take us to that point that we will go and mourn over the nation. Like now, life is going up every day. 
Um, you give somebody 1,000, they just buy things and carry like this. They don't struggle. Many times ago, 1,000 was in Giri. It was an elephant, the true elephant. Now there's nothing. You, it's just give you, even your grandmother, give her 1,000. They just go. I gave my mother the other day. Say, what have we bought? Just buy, buy like this. We need to pray for the economic prosperity, not for anything else. That God will prosper even his people. And mourn that life is going to normalize. Look again in chapter 13, 34 to 35. Look at Jerusalem. Say, oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. Now, this prayer is for Jerusalem. Some prayers, there are things people talk of called territorial spirit. There are spirits that can be operating in Kenya, and they are not in Uganda. You would go and pray. You would go to a and say, Lord, here our county. Okay? And you would mourn over them. You show concern our nation in your prayer. This would also mean for a certain section of our place, God wants us to get to that place. Number two, in terms of how we need to, we should pray for the nation. I've said that in terms of showing all of the points are similar. Uh, citizens should take time to intercede concerning the fair affairs of the nation. We are very deliberate about this. In our midweek prayer, we'll be praying for the family, the nation, and the church. Deliberate 20 minutes. We have actually made to be, we want to pray. Whatever God will want to do in this, let him do whatever we are praying. It is part of patriotism. Patriotism goes beyond just wearing um, um, national colors and attending events. We must pray for our nation. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4 says, which we read there, when I heard this thing, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the Lord or the God of heaven. Yeah, Timothy again, um, in First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1, Paul says, I urge you then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So if you are a believer and you never pray for your nation, what you are saying is you are not practicing patriotism. Ask your neighbor whether they have been praying for the nation. Because some of us pray for ourselves every day. Niwewe, na mimi, na wewe. Yani, you pray for yourself every day. You don't pray for anything. Imagine, every day. One as we say, lack of patriotism. We need to pray for our nation. Citizens should participate in rebuilding the nation. The word there is rebuilding of the nation. As citizens, we can be part of the destruction or reconstruction of the nation. We should choose reconstruction. Praise the Lord. When things are down and people are talking about all negative and manner of things, we need to be the one that gather people. Nehemiah said in verse 5 that I answer the king, if it pleases the king and if, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my fathers are buried so that I can rebuild it. Some of you, when you find something in this nation, like, for example, a stolen vehicle. You remove the engine and say, this one can do more. <laughs> you destroy it, my father. But we want people that will fix the small thing that the vehicle would run. Okay? You become the people that you find. I love the people who do afforestation and deforestation, uh, reforestation. They are saying you don't take anything from the, the forest. But there are some of you, when you find a tree almost falling in the forest, and it is said, you will finish it so that you carry it. Now, that is what you are saying. And you are, we must rebuild the nation. We must rebuild the nation. God is sending us, we go and rebuild our nations. For the things that are not working well, put them in order. Do not pray that. Let them go wayward. 
so that we use it to campaign because we use problems in this country to campaign. You know, people use, you go and find things are gone. So you say, you didn't do this, I will do this. So kata kabisa, or you put more colors to make it more red so that you can campaign. Now God is asking you to rebuild the nation. So you need to go and think some things that you will be able to do. That is your assignment. You need to do number four. Citizens should serve sacrificially. You should serve sacrificially for your nation. Public service sometimes seen as an opportunity to enrich oneself. Patriotism requires that we serve selfishly, self, selflessly. God wants us to serve sacrificially. There are people who are mean, okay? You go to their office, okay? They want to leave just one minute before time, and then everything that is there is theirs. Some of you, and I am just saying this with a lot of respect, if somebody who came to your office or your home, would they find some illicit uh, things? Like, for example, a cup that belonged to your office. It's, I'm just saying simple. Because there are some of you, when you even enter the office, everything you put in the pocket. There are even some people who carry mandazi, mandazi bread, home. This is it, the patriotism. You carry almost. Those who are given is okay. There are some who have been given written sitam. When you come to my place, the elders may come one day. But if you find home, if you find home, now we are bought new screens. There were some screens were destroyed. You find them in my corner. Now, these are things I'm talking about. There are people that have used office to enrich themselves. God wants us to serve sacrificially. I'm speaking to you with a lot of decorum because there are people, you go to their homes, you find the things that are supposed to be in the office, they are their place. There are things that are supposed, there are people, <laughs> hallelujah. Now I need to go, number four, number four. I should not go much for, I can be stoned. Citizens should avoid and fight corruption. Now, we need to avoid and fight corruption. If we are the people that are becoming channels of corruption, it will never end. One of my senior pastors served and I told me, if it is in the church, it will not go out from the world. If corruption is in the world, in the church, it will not go out of the world. God wants the church to be the first to fight corruption. But if it's in the church, it will not go out of the world. We should avoid and fight corruption. It's a mammoth. It's a mammoth. There are people who say, oh, you know, how do we get tender in Sitam? My friend, it's just open door. And we pray that it gets there. It gets poor, even in your places. So that we make people get jobs. Because there are people in different names that are just getting tenders. One person in one place. So, one person is prospering in different names. The same person in different forests. Good patriotism means that we do not engage in underhand deeds, but instead expose them. Daniel chapter 6, verse 3 to 4. The Bible says, Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the other demonstrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned, that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs. But they were unable to do this. These are the people we are looking for. They could not find, they could not, they could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Now, God wants us to be that particular person that is free from all corruptions. That if anything will be found, don't compare yourself. You know you could be a manager and you sit with the other man. Even if you walk to office and you are a manager, please walk. That's what God is calling us to. Stop that comparison. Even pastors, you know you can go at a place, some of us go and you wonder, leave alone me asking for body. There are people when they arrive, they, they arrive. don't my brother, don't. This is corruption. And they looked and they could not find. But you come there, then you realize, have several chess cards, many things. 
ask myself, where did the, the pastor get all this corruption? But there are people who are able to drive that in a clean business. If it's a clean business, it's okay. God is inviting us to fight and to avoid. Now, to fight is a lot of strength. To avoid is just to walk away from it. Let's do that in engage. Citizens should participate in national affairs. Patriotism requires that we participate in various activities of the nation, such as elections, census, and other national events. We should participate in those events. And we talked of that perspectoral levels. You can actually vibe. You can actually be an observer. You can be an official in that. And you come to tell people it is true uh, that Christians can change the world. Uh, Christopher uh, written another book, The Mission of God. And he said there's no dichotomy between the mission of God and the things of this world. What he means is Christians should be of influence to change the dark of darkness of the things we think by being participators. We need to be around the table, not running away. Amen? Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 5, she says, In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken for the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Queen Quirinius was a governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee in, to Judea to Bethlehem in town of David because he belonged to the house and in line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and he was expecting a child. You read about that. Number four, seven, citizens should expose evil schemes against the nation. We have said this, I should not overemphasize this, that every once in a while, people will, um, will hatch wicked plans against the nation, okay? It is our duty to reveal such a wrongs against being patriotic, Okay, twice Mordecai and, and Esther exposed wicked plans against their countries. One against the king in the land where they lived and another against Israel. Being patriotic, you don't allow people who are planning to finish our country, that they proceed with a plan. You report them to the relevant authorities and that is being patriotic. So do not be part of them, but you expose and that will be good. Number eight is that citizens should give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. It is our spiritual and patriotic obligation to support the government to meet its national obligation. Interestingly, both Jesus and Paul advocated paying taxes even to the wicked Roman government. Many of us have been accused Caesar, uh, why do church pay tax? It was a question that came even in the AGM. But we must pay tax. We must give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. We don't wait for, we don't wait for um, the, the, the government to come and witch hunt us. Um, some of us sometimes blame us of our records. Our records build, helps us to know what tax needs to be done. Before salary enters my account, it's normally chopped off. Uh, chopped off. And that helps me. You become... A, 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 and we need to help some of us. Today I'm preaching, but some of us need to move to the practice of paying taxes. Many people have, don't know what it's called, avoiding or evading. Which, which one is illegal? Evading. Now, many of you are evading to pay taxes. So you look for a good tax man. Now, that is why our nation is not prospering. We cannot put, we should not avoid to pay tax. We should not evade. Uh, you could, the tax avoidance is legal. Now I'm a preacher. The accountants are looking at me. Now this is where I need your prayer when you go home. Evasion, the wrong one. Okay, we should avoid that. We should not evade to pay tax. We as patriotic citizens should declare what we have. If all of us would declare to be good. I was giving you the story of a, a collection of of, of, of parking fee, particularly those who go to Nairobi, is high. So there are people there, they receive a third of what the government, and they will not ask you, with 300 
I saw some people that they get 100 bob. They say 100, but you are foolish. You, get, you, you want to pay 300. So let's promote the nation by paying taxes. I'm speaking this because if you don't pay tax, you will also struggle to pay tithe. You, okay? But I'm talking about tax. Today is tax. I'm speaking for the government. I don't, I'm not, I've not been sent by anyone. Praise the Lord. But we want citizens that pay tax. There are people who are avoiding tax. They are avoiding tax. Yeah, there are companies that want to close that you don't pay tax. You know why I've emphasized that. Do what God wants you to do. Pay tax. Those who are in business, income tax. Rental, income tax. Praise the Lord. Number three, how should believers handle negative patriotic practices? I have also alluded to this. One is that there are situations or circumstances that a Christian who is faced with negative patriotic practices. How should believers conduct themselves? Believers must resist any acts that dishonor God. You must resist, resist. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow to, bow to the golden image even after King Nebuchadnezzar threatened them with the dire consequences. There are things we must resist. Like the one I've just talked, get to your corner, resist. Uh, sometimes, um, sorry if we have a policeman in this house, yeah, they want to put you in a place you feel like you talk like them. And, uh, ah, yeah, please resist, resist. There's another one that I'm resisting somewhere, not for police. It concerns us here. Resist in the name of, because they, they will make the thing look lighter. It's good to pay that, and that will be good for you. You can read that in Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 8. Believers must not participate in ethnic prejudice. Now, like our nation has more tribes, our country and some of us who are there, we must resist to participate. Don't be a person that wants just to um, encourage people because of your tribe, your nationalism. I've always challenged us, even I remember preaching during Christmas and said, if you think that the person of the different tribe you had, go and buy them Christmas. There are people here who only love people of their own tribe. And that we must, we're saying, we must not participate in that. I can love you from my tribe, but I should not use the other to block others. Because we are talking about nationalism, patriotism. We are all, first of all, of the kingdom of God, then to others. So you don't just see, Pastor Buire, there are people who see me first as I'm a lawyer, and I'm not actually. My father was a Ugandan, he was doing business here. He can easily help So, Mimi ni Muganda ama Mukenya. But I'm a Kenyan citizen. That is very important. But some of you even see wrongly. And you participate. When I get you, say your pastor has refused. Tell your neighbor he has refused. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Kenyan tribe around that tribalism thing. And when you talk about nationalism, we must arise and refuse. That's how we have to. Validate. Some of us even don't want to talk about that because it's not a sad story. Because, you know, when my father was doing business, like in they make a good meal and talk about it. God does it one. And by the way, for us as a church in this place, because this church is going to grow big and larger, it's drawing people. When I'm like this, I'm seeing people from Asia, and I'm standing here. I'm seeing the whites, that place. Now, how do we reduce ourselves to a small tribe? How? God must help us to avoid those prejudices. Acts chapter 1, chapter 6, verse 1. The Bible says in those days, and this is these days here, when the number of disciples were increasing, the Greeks and Jews, referring to the Greeks, among them complain against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in their daily distribution 
of food, of, of food. If you read that whole story, the apostle went later and said, we will not neglect the word of God to go there. Let's resolve the issue. The issue was not that they were Hebraic and they were Greek. The issue was they were lacking food. Are we together? So we solve the issues. We don't go and attack person. The leadership principle for many managers were here. One of my mentors told me, don't attack persons. Attack issues. Now, if issues is food distribution, get the elders, get to the table. And food must be served equally. Are we together? Now, they did that. And that was good. We don't participate and look like we are lighting fire. And so we think now, because of this balance, this, we don't balance that. Praise the Lord. I'm finishing this in the conclusions, like in your book. I will just read it. What comes out through this lesson is that ambassadors of heaven, uh, we have a critical patriotic role to play in our nations. Part of the kingdom influence of a believer on the nation is how we are perceived to relate with our country and its affairs. The Christian witness and prophetic voice of those who show a sense of patriotism are often taken more seriously by the government and public uh, than those who appear aloof or adversaries or adversarial to their country. So this means that patriotism is a critical component of our kingdom agenda, which unfortunately has been ignored by many believers. We want us to work up to national good. May the Lord grant us that grace to do that. Be proud Kenyans. Be people when we meet, but I love it when you go to other countries, you meet the Kenyans. He now happened to when you are here. When you are out there, I tell you, it's sweet. You meet Wambua, you meet Mwangi. I told you Mwangi bought me some Ugali in Ethiopia. I had not eaten Ugali for three days. I said, Mwangi, I should be meeting you every day until this conference ends. But when you are here, you can't sit eye to eye with Mwangi. Let's arise to national hoods and do patriotic, patriotic believers. Doing all that God wants us to do. It is a proud thing. We are first of all believers before anything else that identifies us where we were born. If that will happen, it will be okay. And I'm telling you, if it is in the church, it cannot go out of the country, out of the world. God wants us to buy this, and that will be a blessing to us.